Yeah, the resources are there. Resources are there. Alright. So chapter 9 test review, I'm going to talk about what's going to be on our test. So um, this will hopefully help you guys when your test is going to be Are you going to vlog in summer? Am I going to vlog? Maybe. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. Okay, so let's say I have this information. Uh, 9.1 is finding other trig identities or trig functions using uh, some information given to us. So this says that cosine is negative 8 over 17, and says that our theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2. So if we're between pi and 3 pi over 2, which quadrant does that put us in? If we're between pi and 3 pi over 2, three. then that puts us in quadrant 3. Since we're in quadrant 3, our cosine and sine should be negative, which our cosine is negative, so that makes sense. So. Uh, to write out the other trig functions here, I kind of need to draw out a triangle. So I like to just keep my triangles consistent by putting theta in the bottom corner and the right angle on the right side. But if you want to draw it another way, you can. It's up to you. <clears throat> so this triangle is representing this cosine here. And cosine is 8 over 17. Remember that cosine is adjacent over... Hypotenuse. So that means that my adjacent side is going to be 8, and my hypotenuse is going to be 17. I'm going to ignore the negative for now, just because we're going to use this to figure out what our signs are later. So can I find the missing side of this triangle? Yes. Yes. Diagonal theorem, right? We can do 17 squared minus 8 squared. And if we square 17 and subtract 8 squared, what does that give us? It's 225. And we have to find the square root of this to figure out what the side length is. So the square root of 225 is 15. So that means that my missing side here is 15. Um, typically, what we've been doing so far and what's going to be on your big ideas assignment is to write out all of the trig functions. For our test, in order to save time, I'm just going to ask for one trig function. So once you have this triangle drawn out, I'm just going to ask what is one of the trig functions. So for example, I could say, what is tangent theta here? Well, since I'm in quadrant three, tangent should be positive or negative? Positive. Positive. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is? Negative. Opposite is? over the adjacent side, which is? Adjacent over eight. eight. Tangent opposite adjacent total. Eight. So it'll just be 15 over eight. And it's gonna be positive because remember, tangent is positive in the third quadrant. So I'm just gonna ask for one of the trig functions. I won't ask for all five of them. Makes sense, right? So the question would look very, very similar to this. <laughs> Camera picks up all that stuff. So. <laughs> Just one. But for today's assignment, it's going to ask for all five of them. But on our actual test, you're just going to get one. Why are there so many pages? Uh, there's a lot of formulas that I put in here. Oh, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly all frame. Every single, like, uh, you're talking, you're out of frame. Yeah, I, I try, I try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, moving on, our trigger identities. We should know how to simplify our trigger identities. Hopefully we know how to do this by now. Um, are we all good on this one? <laughs> so let's say that I have something that looks like this. Uh, let's say I have cosine So let's say I have these two pieces, and we want to simplify this. First thing I want to do is I want to look for this. Does this exist on my table? Yes. Yeah, what is this equal to? Cosine pi over 2 minus theta. Uh, sin over sin theta. Yeah, it's right here, right? Yes, sir. So this entire expression of cosine pi over 2 minus theta, all of this is the same as just sine theta. And we can bring down this cosine. Now we're going to say it's in the bottom left, too. Oh, it's cos, not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we rewrite sine as something else? Yes. 1 over C S C theta. Beautiful. I feel like you understand this really well, Edgar. Yeah, because it's like replacing, like, it's like puzzles. I like puzzles. Yeah. And again, our cosecant comes down as well. Now, from here, what cancels out? The, the CS. <laughs> oh, cosecants. So, cosecants here are going to both cancel out. So, just the one's left? Just the one is left. So, our answer here is just going to be. Not bad. So that's something similar to this one. Test. Yeah. Alright, we got on this? Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Okay. That's why I covered my mouth. So, uh, 9.2 is some different formulas. Uh, hopefully, we're somewhat familiar with these formulas by now. Uh, but again, you can use your notes to write these out. Uh, but we will be solving these. Um, these were probably the questions that took the most time to do because we had to solve out two triangles and then we had to plug them in. So what I'm going to do for you guys on this test is I'm going to give you the two triangles. So it should save you some time. So let's say that we're trying to find sine of A plus B. Sine of A plus B is going to be sine A, cosine B, plus cosine A, and sine B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you guys both triangles. So I will give you triangle A, and I'll give you all the pieces of triangle A. So the side lengths will be 4, 3, and 5. And then I'll give you another triangle called triangle B. And we'll say that this is 6, 8, and 10. That makes sense. So all of this information will be given to you, and I want you guys to plug in the correct pieces. <laughs> so if we're looking for sine of A plus B, we're doing sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. Sine A, if I'm looking at triangle A, what is the sine of this triangle? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's what we need. So it's 3 over 5? Good. So this sine A is going to be 3 over 5. Does that make sense? 
And then cosine B, if I'm looking at triangle B, what's the cosine of triangle B? Cosine is what again? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Same thing, right? Same thing, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Oh, no, uh, it's 8 and 10 now. Yeah. I was looking at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be 6 is my adjacent side oh, over my hypotenuse, right? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. cosine of this guy, cosine of A, will be adjacent to hypotenuse or or the body. And sine of B, opposite over hypotenuse is eight over ten. Eight over ten. And from this point, we can just plug this into our calculator. Does this make sense? So again, I'm going to give you guys both triangles here, so it should take a little less time to, to do it. So just make sure you plug in the numbers correctly, make sure you type in your calculator correctly, and you should get a fraction answer. Cool, cool. All right, we can also simplify expressions um, given certain pieces and using our unit circle. So let's say that I had something like cosine of x plus pi over two. Uh, looking at our formula sheet, what is cosine a plus b? Cosine A plus B is going to be cosine A, cosine B. Wait, it was cosine A, cosine B minus sin A, sin B. Good. And we can plug in our A and B values, which are x and pi over 2. So it should look like this. Cosine x, cosine pi over 2, minus sine x, sine Again, taking that equation from above. <clears throat> now we can use our unit circle to figure out what cosine pi over 2 and sine pi over 2 is. Uh, my unit circle got cut off, so I apologize. Um, but you guys can find one on Google. Or there's some on the old notes. Uh, so looking at my unit circle, where is pi over 2 in terms of degrees? Remember that our ordered pairs are always written as cosine comma sine. So what is the cosine of pi over 2? 1. Oh, zero. Zero. 0. And then the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So we can replace these with 0 and 1. So this is all equal to 0. And this is all equal to 1. Cosine times zero is zero. Negative sine times uh, one is negative sine x. If I take negative sine x away from zero, it's just going to be negative sine x. Does that make sense? Simplifying these guys, make sure you know how to plug into the equations, make sure you know how to read your unit circle. Questions? Can I scroll down and read a little more? So, 
Uh, next up is the law of sines. Uh, we can find the area of a triangle. So if we're given something like this, let's say that we have 36 degrees here. So there's a seven pole. So if we have two side lengths of the triangle and an angle between them, we can use these formulas. Basically what these for formulas boil down to is these two are the side lengths and this is our angle. So what are my side lengths of this triangle? 12. And? 7. 7. What's the angle measure? 36. Yeah, so I can just plug those guys into the equation. So I'm plugging in one half of my side length, which is 7 and 12, multiplying by the sine of my angle, which is 36. And again, most of this is calculator work. So you can just type this straight into Desmos and it will give you your answer. This one's not bad, right? Yeah. All right, let's say we have another triangle and let's say this is uh, 75, 40, How do I find angle B? Subtract. Subtract from? Uh, angle C and A. For the degree? Yeah, we want to subtract 180, right? We're gonna have, we know that triangles add up to 180 degrees. So we can subtract the ones that we know. And that leaves us with, how's your mental math? So 65. 40 minus 100 minus 40, yeah. 65, close though. 65. Good job. So my missing side, my missing angle here is 65 degrees. So if anyone misses this, I'm gonna be very sad. Please don't miss this. You guys can use Desmos and you just have to subtract. <clears throat> From here, so this is gonna be its own question, solving for the missing angle. And then we'll have another question using the law of sines. How do I set up the law of sines? Sine A. Sine A, which is sine of, what's my degrees for A? Uh, 40. 40. Over A. Over A equals? equals sine uh, 65, 65 over, B. over B. Equals sine 75 over C. And what's my C value? And if we want to solve for one of the missing sides, what do we do? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. So we can cross multiply to solve. Um, I will not have you guys solve for the entire triangle. I will have you solve for either A or B. So either you're just focusing in on this, or you're focusing in on this. So not the whole thing. A little less work. Questions? This last one, I don't think I need to go through this, right? Because uh, if we're given three sides of the triangle, finding the semi-perimeter is fairly simple. Add the three sides together, divide by two. Take that number, plug it into this equation. Mostly calculator stuff. Do I need to do an example of this? We're okay. There is one on your homework today, so if you want to ask me questions on that, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. So for our uh, summary, please write one area of improvement. If you have no areas of improvement, please say, thank you for being a great teacher, Mr. Uh, I'm going to get 100% on this test, and I'm not worried about it in the slightest.